don't know why the lighting is so well i do know why the lighting is the, the, uh, hello 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 and welcome back to another video um sorry for the lighting today it's literally it's pretty late it's 7 45 um and i put off filming today but i don't know why i was just busy i saw my best friend today with social distancing we sat in our mom's cars and spoke to each other so yeah Hi. <laughs> um and today i'm gonna be talking about my biggest fears before i went to japan because obviously studying abroad can be a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes because you're going to a completely new country um oftentimes a different language and this is what i was most worried about also fun fact i rearranged my room in case you didn't notice my bed is there now because i have like squirrels in my wall and I couldn't sleep because I can hear them like right next to my head so I rotated my bed that way one day at like 1.40 a.m. because I need my beauty sleep. The first thing I was most nervous about was communicating with my host family and also just would I get along with my host family because I wasn't sure what the dynamic would be like between us or if I would be able to communicate everything I needed to them. Um, like what if I wasn't able to explain something that was really important and then it was just and then there was like some misunderstanding. I didn't want something to get lost in translation. But luckily that never happened. My host family was very understanding with things. And um, we always tried really hard to communicate well with each other. And I would usually bring a dictionary to dinner so that I could communicate with them as best as possible. And they were just very patient and understanding. And I felt like the whole thing went really smoothly, which was good. And I was also just worried that it would be a little awkward because like what if what if they were just like really quiet and I was like not being quiet or something. And then, it was like me being like, so, what'd you do today? And then them being like, Ugh. but they were so nice. Literally the best host family anyone could ask for. They took me out places. They were like, they always talked to me at dinner and they always had like questions for me and I could ask them questions. It was the best situation ever. They were so, so friendly and like, I miss them. I should talk to them soon. In our live, they even made a live group chat called Team. Like, it was Team Guresu. It's just so cute. The second big thing that I was worried about um, was racism because I mean, yeah, I'm biracial, but most people just look at me and think that I'm like fully African American, especially if they're not African American or African American or black or whatever themselves. And not that they're like, I associate nothing wrong with being like black. Obviously, like of course, I love my mom and like I love. Yeah, there's nothing wrong there, but it does make it so that sometimes people don't always see me in the most positive light when I'm abroad so and or even within my own country so I was worried about that but I had no issues whatsoever like no one ever said anything mean to me people were honestly very complimentary people complimented my skin complimented my eyes my hair like they were so so nice about everything and just very open-minded which I was surprised by especially in um a country where most of the people there um, have grown up there or, not, or are Japanese or at least like half Japanese so I was very pleasantly surprised by that and it made me more optimistic when I was um, for like when I would travel in the future there were some things that um, I couldn't tell if it was because of my races in particular or like um, or if it was just because I was a foreigner because I think there is some special treatment that foreigners generally get um, just because they're not native Japanese people and um, I think sometimes Japanese people get a little nervous about how to act around them. Whenever I was on the bus, no one would ever sit next to me unless they absolutely had to and I don't know, I, I can't tell if it was because I was just a foreigner or because I'm a foreigner who looks black so I don't know like what the deal with that was but that was something interesting but it did mean that I always or almost always had um, a little extra space around me so not complaining. <laughs> But if anything, people were just very complimentary, super nice, and like at most just curious, and people might ask me about my hair every now and then or something, and it was just really cool. The next thing I was worried about is transportation because, <laughs> first of all, just getting to Japan because that was the first time I ever navigated an airport by myself, or multiple airports actually, because I had two stops, so it was quite a journey to get there, but I did it, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because Usually when I'm in an airport, I'm just kind of following my parents around and I'm like, oh, okay, they know where we're going. But then I actually read the signs and I was able to get where I needed to and I was able to ask for help when I needed it. There was a delay between my flight from California to Tokyo, but the Haneda airport, they were super duper cool, awesome. And they like delayed all of the connecting flights from that so that the people from my flight could catch their flights anyway. And so I was like running around trying to get where I needed to, but it was totally fine. I followed 
all the signs. I asked like this guy that was like cleaning the airport um, where it was and it was actually pretty okay. Don't be afraid of the airport. You can do it. You can do it. And the worst thing that happens is you miss your flight. Next thing, in terms of transportation, I was also worried about getting to and from school because Okay, so it's not that hard to get um, an easy one-way ticket anywhere or to just pay on the bus like that. It was totally fine. My host dad showed me how um, paying on the bus works, but I was like, okay, well, this is really expensive. I keep getting like one-way tickets every time I want to go somewhere. So, but the language school, Genki um, Japanese and Culture School, they actually um, told us about where we could go to get bus passes and stuff. So I went to the bus terminal and bought like a 30, 31 day bus pass, which saved me a lot of money. And I was able to work with my host dad to figure out how to get to and from school. And then also Google Maps is a thing. And it actually works really well with the Japanese bus systems and like train systems. They have all the different times and everything. So it was really helpful when I was um, trying, to, trying to get to my classes. Yeah. The fourth thing that I was worried about when I was going to Japan was my hair. To be honest, I did not know how to take care of my hair very well before I went on the trip. Like I could not get this level of definition before I went there because I hadn't experimented with it. I hadn't experimented with it enough, but something I'm still trying to figure out is how to do carry on luggage but bring my curly hair products with me within the liquid requirements because that is a struggle. I was worried about making my hair look nice when I was there. I was also worried about how people, how, oh my god, why can't I talk? I was worried about how people would perceive it. Um, I was worried because I read in my, in the handbook from my study abroad agency that people in Japan don't, um, they kind of like look down on when you take a long shower and many if any of you know out there what i'm talking about like i wash my hair in the shower there was no such thing as combing this hair dry like it just doesn't happen i was like how am i gonna take my one hour hair wash days basically or one one and a half hours um when my like with my host family i was like i oh, what but that was actually okay i managed to wake up early in the morning some days or when nobody was home i would just like take a really long like do all my hair washing and it, it worked but my hair still looked terrible because i didn't know how to take care of it it pretty much looked like a fluff most of the time but you know people liked it anyway because they were just like wow that's really cool and i didn't have anyone judging me because no one had my hair types so they're just like hair that's different from ours cool the last thing that i was worried about was the bathrooms and not because okay it was a little confusing when i first arrived in tokyo haneda airport because the bathrooms had so many buttons in them like i took a video when i first got there of the bathroom because i was like why are there so many buttons they're like things talking to me but besides that i had read about squat toilets and i was like excuse me like i can squat i'm pretty i'm fairly flexible but i was like and like what if i fall over into something unpleasant or i don't even know what to say about that so i was like Ugh, before I went, but it was fine. There were only a couple times when I ever even saw squat toilets. Like sometimes in public restrooms, they had the option of using a squat toilet, but most of them were regular, like Western kind of toilets. And I was like, it was a relief that they had lots of different um, toilet options. So it wasn't like you had to use a squat toilet. And most toilets, my house always felt like totally normal. Or not, I don't want to say that's normal because normal is different everywhere, but it was something that I was comfortable with and I never had to use a squat toilet, which was a blessing. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, then give it a thumbs up. If you um, like the kinds of videos I make and you want to see more of me, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you and see you in the next video. Bye.